his word. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He is your provider Amen. and your protector. Thank you, Jesus. That's his word. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his every word. Just to rest upon his promise, just to know that says the Lord. trust in Jesus, Amen. just to take him at his word. 
just to rest upon his promise. Hallelujah. 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 The highest praise. It is the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. How we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I come now to say thank you. Just a part of my life, but you're my everything. Your love reaches way down deep within. It passes human understanding. There will always be a song for you. I'll sing. One word alone. Just can't express my heart's desire. My gratitude for one more day. My needs you all supply.
Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. All honor to you, O oh God. All honor to you, O oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. The highest praise. The highest praise. Oh, praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Oh, praise. Oh, we praise your name, Jesus. Oh, we praise your name, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. Oh, we, we magnify you your we magnify name, your name oh, God. oh Lord. We magnify and exalt you, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. We exalt you, Jesus. Hallelujah, we exalt Jesus. You, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, mighty. How we oh, praise your name, oh God. Jesus, Jesus. How we praise your name, oh Lord. We praise your name, oh Lord. We praise your name, oh Lord. How we praise. How we praise you. We praise your name, oh Lord. Somebody just say that. Just say, we praise your name, oh Lord. Praise your name, oh Lord. We praise your name, oh Lord. We praise your name. I want you to sing it, sing it like I'm hearing it. So listen, this is what I'm hearing. It says, we, I want you to listen. We praise your name, oh Lord. That's what I hear. We praise your name, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We praise your, your name, O oh Lord. Let's just try that together and trust me you're gonna feel the Spirit of God move in this place hallelujah Jesus we praise your name
Hallelujah, Jesus. If only you could hear what I'm hearing. It's like a thousand angels at his feet. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise your name, O oh Lord. We praise your name, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. We glorify your name, O oh God. How we worship you, Jesus, we worship you. How we praise your name, Jesus, we praise you. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be unto the name of the Lord, hallelujah. At this time, we're just going to invite the moderator to come. Praise God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift up the name of the Lord. Let's lift up the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's magnify the name of the Lord. You're not here to see me. You're here to see the true and living God. We are here to meet with God. So I want you to lift up his name. Glorify his name with me, everybody. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like to greet our bishop and our first lady. Lady Davis, grace and peace be unto you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to greet all officers in their respective position. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. The praise and worship team, give them a hand. Grace and peace be unto you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Those that we often overlook, our ushers, grace and peace be unto you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. The praise and worship team and also the band members, grace and peace be unto you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to greet those that are watching online via social media, grace and peace be unto you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. And also our lovely congregation, thank you for joining us. Grace and peace be unto you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. We thank God for each and every one of you. Today, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to the name of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. It is Women's Sunday. All the women, please stand. It is Women's Sunday. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Give yourselves a hand, woman. You are powerful. You are powerful, woman of God. Amen. And in this time and this season, we want to praise God for you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We are going to greet our ladies presidents that who are absent today. Grace and peace be unto you, Reverend Miller from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Our woman's vice president that just stepped out. Grace and peace be unto you, Reverend Abigail from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I am going to ask um, the praise and worship team to sing a song. Today, oh, that song has been in my spirit. And I'm just going to ask the praise and worship team to sing today, oh. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to the name of God. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is in the house. Amen. The, the Spirit Lord. of the Lord is in the house. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord. Did you hear me? The Spirit of the Lord is in the house. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to the name of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Today, oh, I will lift up my voice in praise. of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're going to greet our first-time visitors. If there are any, please stand. Our first-time visitors, I'm glad that we are all family. Give yourselves a hand. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Now we're going to do the offering. We're going to collect the offering. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Today, oh, I will lift up my voice in praise. Glory to God. 
today. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. For I know you, you are always there for me. Almighty God, you are my only no. No matter what I face, when troubles come my way, I will praise you, Lord. Today, oh, today, oh, I will lift up my voice in praise. can bless the offering. Glory to God. If you can please stand. Thank you. Let us bow our heads before God. Loving Father and our God, we thank you for this another day. We thank you, O God, for each and every one that is in the sanctuary this morning. Father God, this morning I'm asking you to Stretch forth your hands, Lord, over those who, O oh God, stretch forth to bless you this morning. Father God, I'm asking you likewise, God, to remember those who have not this morning, that, O oh God, they may be able to take part in your work here on earth. Father God, just cover us all under your blood, Lord, and anoint us from the crown of our head and to the sole of our feet as we look to you, dear God, and we tell you thanks. Amen. Hallelujah. Remain standing, people of God. Remain standing. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bishop had just stepped out when I, I didn't get a, to greet him properly. And you know, people of God, he took a week vacation and he's looking so fresh and so clean. Amen. And his wife is looking so fresh and so clean. And I hope you are well rested. Glory to God. He deserve it, people of God. He deserves every minute of
of it and I wish it was longer. Glory to God. I was like a little child, amen, missing their parents, amen. Glory to God. Welcome back. Welcome back, Lady Davis. Welcome back, Bishop. We're glad to have you. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's give them a hand. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now for the word, the meat of the matter. You can sit. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. The meat of the matter. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. But first, we're going to ask Bishop to greet the church and to actually introduce the person that will, the vessel that will be speaking Praise today. God. Have a blessed day. Amen. God is good. No, no, no. God is good. Some people still didn't get it, so let me say it one more time. God is good. Amen. Amen. What a day. What a day. I want to thank God today. I want to thank him. What a beautiful day of worship. Amen. Well, on behalf of my beautiful wife and myself, we want to thank you for sending us away. As you can see, amen, we, you send us away. My wife really took care of me. And I really took care of her. Amen. So if you... Amen. Yeah, man. She, she took care of me. I, <laughs> I, I, I call it double portion. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I woke up this morning and I said to my wife, let's go back to Dominican Republic. So I can have my wife all to myself again. But I want to thank you. We want to thank you. You are the best people. Amen. You're the best. Amen. We want to thank God for our gracious musician this morning. Yeah. Before the word, before the word, before the... Because I, I just... I sense that something great is coming. But before the word, I am going to ask my daughter to come and sing one of my favorite songs, even though I don't know a word in it. Do you, is there anybody here like me that you have a favorite song and you don't know it? Amen. No, yeah, you, you sing it in the bathroom under the shower, but for you to sing it in church. A amen. Praise God. She's a psalmist. Put your hands together for her. Put your hands together. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When I think upon your goodness and your faithfulness each day. I'm convinced it's not because I am worthy to receive the kind of love that you give, but I'm grateful for your mercy, and I'm grateful for your grace. And because of how you poured out yourself, I have come to sing the 
to sing your praises. Who am I to worship you? It's your blood that makes the difference in me. And I could never sing your first language he has a language we have our language but he gave us somebody else's language that's why I love to listen to my African people 
Sometimes I don't know what they are saying, but the anointing of God come upon me. And if all I know this morning is, is a moon. That's all right. Please stand. Please stand. Glory to God. Then we, we, have, we have the right musician, no matter what you sing it in. Our musician can play. We thank God for that. There's a word in the house. Yes. Before the foundation of the world. Before God throw down one stone. Before one tree ever grow. He knew who would be preaching around this pulpit. Help me. Receive God's anointed daughter. An anointed woman of God. Sold out for Christ. I want to thank God for her husband. Put your hands together. For Uncle Patrick. Thank you, Jesus. Pray for Reverend Miller, husband, who is not feeling well. That is why she's not here. And I thank God for every first time visitors. A revival is coming in this church. I sense it. Yes. Reverend Abigail, speak God's word thank to you, his Bishop. people. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, church. Thank you. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ to our Bishop and First Lady. And grace and peace be unto you, church. From God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom all things come that is good. You may be seated. This service is completely in the hands of the Holy Spirit. We lock every entranceway. We ask the Spirit of God to dispatch warrior angels around this sanctuary right now in the name of Jesus. Every demonic spirit of influence, of distraction, you are cast out and not welcome. You must leave in the authority that God has given us as kings of the kingdom of heaven. You must leave now. The word that will be planted in you will be short, it will be powerful, and it will be for you. I pray that my voice is silenced completely, and only the Spirit of God you will hear. And those who have an ear, hear what the Spirit of God has to say to you. It can only better you. It can only help you. The time is short. The time is short. And those who do not heed the warning of the Lord will suffer grave and regret. Amen. We will suffer grave and regret. I have a song that I wanted to sing before I started, and then I said, oh, well, <laughs> our psalmist um, sang already, so I won't do it, but it's still on my heart to do, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and sing that song and then deliver the word to you quickly. Thank you, Jesus. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. For you reign on the throne. For you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. And I will sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you you reign on the throne and 
you are God and God alone because of you my cloudy days are gone I will sing to you this song I just want to say that I love you more than anything I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. If you know the song, let's sing it to the Lord this morning. Say, Lord. I love you, Jesus, and I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. If you love the Lord more than anything, stand up this morning and say, I love you, Jesus more than anything more than anything i worship and adore you just want to tell you that i love you more than anything oh i love you and adore you I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything Lord I love you more than anything say it from your heart Lord, I love you more than anything. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I love you more than anything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Speak Holy Spirit, speak Holy Spirit, speak Holy Spirit. Lord, we love you, we love your word, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. You know, when you love somebody, and a lot of us don't know what love is, a lot of us say I love you and they we have no clue what love is I love you I love ice cream I love my dog I love looking good if my dog is gone there's no love if the ice cream is gone there's, what am I loving we tell each other I love you and you say why do I love you because you make me feel good. Because you always do the right thing at the right time. Because you're always there. What happens when that person is no longer good to you? Do you still love? What happens when that person gains weight? Do you still love? What happens when that person ages? Do you still love? What happens when that person backslides? Do you still love? What happens when you are disappointed by everything that they have done or whom they seem to have been. Do you still love? When we tell Jesus, I love you, Jesus, what does that mean? Because without knowing what it means, then you cannot say that you love him. We say that we love him because of all of the good things that he's done. We say we love him because he first loved us. Why do you love him? I want you to examine your hearts this morning and ask yourselves, why do I love Jesus? Because he first loved me? 
or because of who he is, not because of all the good things that he has done, but because of who he is, what he represented, and how he loved us so much that he made a way where there was no way so that he would be with us regardless, that he would love us in spite of ourselves, in spite of our attitudes and our, our rebellion against God, in spite of, in spite of, in spite of the secret things that he sees that no one else can see, he loves us. Praise God. How powerful is that? I guarantee you that if I saw half of what you do or someone does in private, there might be a question as to how I have to tell me, you love them, you love them. Remember, you love them. But God doesn't have that aptitude. God just loves. His whole nature is love. And as believers, that's what we do. We love the Bible says that they will know us by our love. By our love. I want you to turn, the, um, turn in your Bibles to James chapter 1. I'm going to read. Um, the topic that I chose for this uh, message is love. love love when lust is conceived James chapter 1 says James a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greetings my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all, now, to all men liberally, and unbraid it not, and it shall be given him. Verse 6, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he who wavers is like a, a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree... Rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low. Because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withers the grass, and the flowers thereof fall, and the grace of the fashion of it perishes. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them who love him. Blessed is the man. I've got to read it to you again. You need to hear it because we say we love God. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them who love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I was tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempts he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then, when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, when it is finished, when it is full grown, 
it brings forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. I love that he ends it with, don't make a mistake. Don't go off track. I want you to know that God is a God who is very strategic in raising his people, in managing his people. He's always looking. There's nothing about us that takes him by surprise. But there is a thing that lives in us called lust. And this thing in us causes us to desire things that God does not want for us. Maybe it's because of a, an identity crisis. We don't know who we are in Christ. Maybe it is because we are so much flesh. Maybe it is because we have not really sunken our teeth into what God expects of us. Maybe we don't know. Whatever it is, we are tempted to go astray. And I'm talking to the church because I believe that everyone in here has given their life over to Christ. And yet there is found in us a lust for the things of this world, a lust for belonging to this world, a lust for the comforts of this world versus a lust for the things of the kingdom of God. We would rather watch TV than pray. We would rather talk than read the word. We would rather go out instead of coming to church. And it seems like the things of God is not as important as it should be. We will tell you that it is, but it is not. Because as a man thinketh, so does he do. I want you to know that God still loves us. But there is a standard in heaven, and I think that a lot of us have forgotten you know, that, that there is a standard of behavior. There is a standard. There is a protocol. We don't just come to Christ and then we go back to doing whatever we did before. And it, it's not. There is a standard. Every religion has a standard. You look at the Muslims. We were, we were driving by someone the other day. And I looked into her car. And she's in the car and she's bowing her head touching the, the, um, the, the window in the front seat. She's saying her prayers. Us? It's not that way, is it? Some of us pray because we want to fall asleep fast. Some of us read the Bible because that is definitely the way to fall asleep fast, whether you're in church or anywhere. Why has the church lost its power? Because the children of God... Do not place priority on what they say they love. If you have a plant and you don't water it and you don't take care of it, it will die. So will your relationship with God if you don't take care of it, if you don't nurture it, if you don't spend time in it, it will die. How can we say that we love God and we want nothing to do with him but the minimal? It's not fair. Do you know the price that was paid? If we understand and realize the price that was paid for us, in the hope that we will accept, for the Bible says, for whosoever will can come. He, may, he paid a price that was open for everybody, for anybody. And we're quick to say, the devil made us do it. That's how I am. I'm working it out. God is not finished with me yet. We heard that one, right? We wear the bracelets that says, what would Jesus do? But we don't do what Jesus would do. We don't know what Jesus would do, and honestly, we don't really care. Why can I say that? Because we don't behave as such. God is looking for a people a people who have one mind, and that mind is, I am the bride of Christ. I am not just anybody. I am the chosen bride of Christ. My dress cannot be purple. My, my headdress cannot be found in old clothes from the thrift store. <laughs> 
I cannot come to meet the bridegroom as I am. You can come to church as you are. And we're talking about jeans and you know, big earrings and you're bringing your nose. You can come to church as you are, but you cannot come before the king at his wedding the way you are. He's looking for a church that is without spot, without wrinkle. I watched my husband when I was walking up the aisle. And I know him. I know he was nervous. I was intent on making him cry. And when I walked up the aisle and I looked at his face, all I saw, I thought he would look me in the eye. No, no, no. He was scouting. Everything had to be in place. He was watching, 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 watching. When I turned, he watched the side. He watched the bump. He watched the legs. He watched everything. He saw everything. How much more God, who was looking for a bride, He's been waiting for his bride. He's been forgiving of his bride. He's been warning his bride. He's been calling on his bride. He hasn't given up once. He's waited a long, 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 long time for his bride. And not only is his bride asleep, but his bride is far from being ready. It's a dangerous thing. In the natural, some of us are last minute people, right? We do things last minute. Last minute is best. With God, there is no last minute. Now is the last minute. Because we do not know the day nor the hour of his return. He's coming back for his bride. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? You cannot be ready if your mind is on the lust of this world, on making money, on getting a husband, on getting children, on getting, 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 getting. You cannot be ready for the bridegroom when he comes if you don't have one thing in mind. I've got to be ready and I've got to get you ready and I've, because I've got to learn how to be the queen. After I have dressed myself, I have to make sure that I can reign as a queen. The Bible says that we will reign with him. A lot of us will not reign, cannot reign, should not reign. Because we're so stuck in ourselves and what we want to do and how we want to do it and what looks right to us. We cannot obey. We cannot follow the instructions of God. God says, no, I say yes. I say wait. I say God, I'm not ready. And God is saying, I want you ready. I'm coming. The heavens are holding me back. I'm coming. I don't even know when I can come. I'm coming. I know and I'm ready. As soon as Father says, go, I'm gone. The trumpet will sound. The dead in Christ will rise. Those who are waiting for him will be caught up to meet him in the air. You got to be ready. It's not a myth. It's not a story. It's happening whether we like it or not. It's going to happen. Whether we're ready or not, it's going to happen. Whether it is five or there is one, it's going to happen. Don't be left out. Especially because we call ourselves saints. Because we call ourselves Christians. God is looking at the heart. God is looking at your heart. And your heart is so busy with the things of this world. We swear, just like the ungodly. It's just a little swear word, you know. <laughs> I say it sometimes, but you know, are you offended? Sorry. I, I won't say it to you anymore. That's the Christian of today. The Christian of today goes home and gets drunk, smokes and sp just to make sure nobody knows when he walks into church. That he has another God. The Christian of today can jump up and down in church. Make holy ruckus. Fool everybody to believe that they are saved, sanctified, holy, ghost filled, water baptized. Jesus on my mind. And then they walk outside and say, I can't stand that church. You see, every time I go in there, I need to find somewhere else. Who are you? Who are you? There is a standard in the kingdom of God. 
And God calls us to a standard of living, a standard of thinking, a standard of behavior. Because we are the bride. If you don't want to be the bride, that's fine. He said, whosoever will. I love you, I release you. But if you want God, if you say you love God, if you sang with me, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. What does more than anything mean? It means that I put down my things. I put down the things to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, knowing that all other things will be added unto me. I don't go after my desires. I don't go after my own way. I don't have an attitude when people tell me things. I don't have an attitude against my leaders. I don't have an attitude against the, the things of God. I'm obedient because God is preparing me. God says don't do it. I'm not going to do it. Is it going to be hard? Yes. But it's hard when your mindset is in rebellion. Because it's not hard. It's just not easy. You have to obey. You have to come in line. The way is a very narrow way. Have you ever squeezed through something? I have a little hamster. And he is determined to climb on my desk. I don't like rats. Right? That's not my thing. Snakes, yes. Rats, no. But he will, he will push his back because he wants to go this way. He'll push his back and his legs and he will climb up to go where he's going. He can't carry food in his mouth. He can't carry any toy, nothing. It's just him. And he is squeezed until he gets to where he wants to go. But us Christians, we want to bring everything with us. We want to first make the phone call that we're going. Everybody needs to know where we're going, what we're doing, why we're doing it, so that we can get the encouragement that we need to actually go through with this thing. And then once we stand there, we, 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 we're scared. We, we hesitate. We hesitate because there's so much in our minds that we think we have to give up. People of God, we are not of this world. We do not belong here. We're only here for our time. And why did, we, why did God send us? here to prepare us for eternity the rescue mission already happened he already came and said this is the way I am the way I am the truth I am the life nobody can come to the father except by me but we want to come with our own way this book tells us exactly how to live. Yes. But we are so tempted to do things our way. I want you to know that we're not the only ones that were tempted in the Bible. We're not. Temptation is not of God, but God will use temptation because the testing of our faith must happen. So that you become matured. So we become proven as pure gold. We quick to say, do you know who I am? Are you pure gold? Have you been tested? Have you been tried? Have you been dragged through the miry clay? Has God held you down and made you wait? Have you surrendered to God? And have you said to God, I'm not going back to the things of this world. I'm not. I just want you. I love you more than anything. Christians are playing all kind of reggae music in their car and bumping when they're driving. It's not Christian reggae. We've combined it. There's a king, a wicked, evil, evil king, Bishop. In uh, Second Kings, Second Kings, I believe ten, and this king, he was the king of Judah, and he decided now that he was um, he was going through trouble, and 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 he uh, worked it out with the king of Syria to help him out through this battle, and 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 when he was there, he saw this uh, altar. And he loved the altar, and he sent back all the specs. It had to be the same way. And he went with this altar 
made, uh, he went back home and he started worshiping God on this altar while there was already an altar of God that God gave exact specifications for that he had access to. But he built his own. Follow me. He built his own and then tried to do the same worship to God. Oh, do the burnt offering worship. Do the sprinkling of the blood uh, um, sacrifice. Do this sacrifice and do sacrifice on it. But it was not what God had wanted. And the same thing with us. We're going to serve God our way. I'm going to be a modern Christian. I'm going to be regular. I don't want to push my friends. I don't want to talk too much about God and be a Bible thumper because I might scare people away and I don't want to scare people away. Scare the devil away. That person is lost, headed straight for hell. And if you don't warn them, you will lose them. How do you say that we love? Well, if I can't love you, in protecting you and in and warning you and in, and in standing in the gap for you. But I want to blend in. We can't blend in, guys. The time is too short. The way is too narrow. Father doesn't want any of us to be lost. We look at Samson. I want you to know that temptation comes out of what you want. The devil can't tempt you with what you don't want. He will only tempt you with your desires. What did Samson want? Samson had all this power and all this beauty. Samson wanted a Philistine girl to love him. Why do I say that? Because he told his father, find me and arrange a wedding between me and a Philistine woman that I saw and I liked. It happened. The Philistines killed him, killed her and her father. He still wanted... A beautiful Philistine woman. The Philistines were your enemy. What are you doing? They were your enemies. But you want a Philistine woman to marry and to love you. So they send along Delilah. The trap is set. I'm telling you that the devil sets traps for, his, for God's people. Because he knows that we are lusting after things that are unrighteous. We are lusting about things that concern us, not what concerns the kingdom. So here he is, Samson, with his desire. And Delilah comes and she's beautiful and she's single. And she's a trap. And she asks him, so what's, the, the, what's, what's your strength? And he tells her some nonsense. And then she says, oh, well, that didn't work. It didn't work. And Samson knows that it's not working. They come and attack him. He laughs it off. He beats them up. He kills some people. And he's, he's back in her lap. He's back in her lap. So she asks him again, well, well uh, if I were to tie you up, how would I get those ties off? And he makes up another story. He's playing with temptation. It is not from God. When you see temptations coming, when you see that person that you want to be with, when you see that drug that you want to try, when you see that position that you want to do anything to get, when you see that dollar, that career that you will do anything to get, it is not from God because God will never tempt you. It is an opportunity for you to prove to the devil that I belong to God. I am the bride of Christ. I am the bride of Christ. And I could say no to the systems of this world because I belong to a greater kingdom. Where I rule and reign with God. What an honor. Finally, the third temptation comes to him with Delilah and she says, come on now. I've asked you once, I've asked you try, twice, and you tricked me. You tricked me. Tell me. And what does she say? Because I, I love you. <laughs> because I love you. And that's what he wanted. Right away, as soon as he got his payout, he gave up the secret. 
And his life after that was done. And now look at Jesus. Jesus was also tempted. Completely different story. He was also tempted. The Bible says that God led him into the, 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 the mountains to be tempted. And God will lead us into areas where there is temptation to see what you're made of. Not to break you. Not to set you up so that you would fail. But that's when you are tempted, your faith grows. You can't be tempted with something, overcome it, and then get tempted with it again and fail. No. If you are tempted with something and you have overcome, it builds up a resilience in you. It builds up a foresight in you. So when you see it coming the next time, you can say, no, 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 no. How many women, and I'm talking to you women today because it's Women's Sunday. How many women have been with a man? You have never gone to his house. You have never um, driven in his car. He only shows up at your house at certain times, often late. And it's usually for one thing. And then, after six months, you finally ask him, you sure you're not married? And what does he respond? I'm living in the basement and my wife is upstairs, but we don't have anything anymore. It's only you. And you believe. Now you were this married man for three years, four years, five years, when God had somebody for you a month after you met him. You were led into the temptation and you failed. People of God, being tempted is nothing. You will always be tempted. You will always be tempted. You must be tempted. Your value comes out of your temptation. I want to tell you that, <laughs> Bishop, when I was reading this thing, I almost fell off my, my seat. When I was analyzing, <laughs> when I was analyzing um, Jesus' temptations, yeah, yeah. Um, can you put up Matthew 4, please, on the overhead? Is anybody there, young people? Okay. And I will find it. Hallelujah. Let this thing sink in you, please, 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 please. Let it sink in you. Matthew chapter 4. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise God. Matthew 4. Um, yes, um, just, just from one. Okay. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit, so Holy Spirit led him up into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry hungry as i said if you are not lusting after something if it's not something that you have a desire for a burning burning desire for it you cannot be tempted the enemy will find something else in you that he can tempt you with to cause your fall and your demise so here it is jesus was hungry and then the devil shows up and when the tempter, that's his name, <laughs> when the tempter came to him, he said, if you be the son of God, command that those stones be made bread. What was he actually saying? 
He's saying, if you really are the son of God, you've been doing miracles all over the place. Show off now. Let's see. Let's see you show off. Let's see you do a miracle. Let's see you do something great. Let's see you show yourself. Let's see a little bit of pride in you. And Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. In other words, I cannot live on the things that I want, that the things that my body needs. I have to follow after whatever God says. If God says it's time to eat, God will feed me. If God needs me to go, I will go. If God wants me to stay on a little longer, I will stay on a little longer. But I'm not going to show off the power just because of you. I will not show off my pride because of you. God didn't say for me to do that. God didn't tell me to do that. And you'll hear all over scripture that, that Jesus is saying, I only do what the Father tells me to do. I only do what I see the Father does. We like to do what we want to do, how we want to do it if we do it and if we don't want to do it. What is the second temptation? Next verse. Then the devil taken him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. Go on. And said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning you and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest any at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone what is he saying to God there he's saying I know that you have power you think you have power right you have influence don't you you can get anybody to do what you want them to do right It's easy for you to get in favor from people, right? God God will take care of you. God has provision. Just 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 throw yourself. Just it's okay. God's gonna catch you. In other words, to us, it's okay to sin. God is there watching you. It's okay to fall. God is gonna pick you up. You don't have to set a standard of living because God God understands. God understands. God does not understand. He hates sin. He hates it. He hates it. He hates it. He hates it. And if you realize that you are walking around with the Godhead within you, the whole power of God, which is in the Holy Spirit that indwells in you, and you are walking into nightclubs, and you are jamming to all kind of hip-hop and reggae and soca and and you have the Holy Spirit exposed to that. And then we say, I love you, Jesus. You won't take your child around smokers because it's a danger to them. But we will take Holy Spirit any place we want to go. The place he really says, don't mingle, don't, 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 don't sit with the ungodly man. Don't, don't, don't have them. Don't, don't be influenced. That's exactly where you're going to go. And you're going to laugh and kiki with all of them. And now we don't recognize you from them at all. You look like them. You don't look like the bride. Because the bride's face is stone face. She's marrying the king no matter what. No matter what. Third temptation, see. Next verse. Next verse, please. Again, the devil taken him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Next. And said unto him, All these things will I give you if thou wilt fall down and worship me. What did God want? What did Jesus want? He wanted his kingdom to come. He lusted after his kingdom's rule on the earth and in his people. He wanted the whole earth to come back to how he had made them, the original plan that the kingdom of God would be at hand on the earth and the people of God would love him and serve him. That's what he wanted. That's what his heart's cry was. That's why he came so that it would be possible. And here's the devil saying, I know what you want, what you really, really want. And I can give it to you. 
if you would just, it's a little, it's just between me and you guys. Nobody has to know. Nobody has to know. But God would know. And in every temptation, what did Jesus say? For it is written. For it is written. And the word of God boosted his resolve not to give in to the temptation. People of God, learn the word of God. Hold on to the word of God. Become the word of God. Carry the word of God. Let everybody you go close to get affected by the word of God. Let every time you open your mouth, even on the phone, they hear the voice of God. That is who we are. That is what we're about. That is why he came. People of God, the time is short. When you look at the things that are going on in this world, it cannot be, uh, it, 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 it can't be much longer. One of these days, a trumpet will sound, and uh, some of us will look around, and you will hear on the news, alien abduction. 40,000 people stolen out of Brampton. They've disappeared. There was a beam of light. <laughs> and your mother is gone. Your pastor is gone. And you're saying, but I served God. I remember Bishop, when I was a kid, my mom went to work late at night. We didn't know she was going out. We were behaving bad. Bad, 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 bad. Two o'clock in the morning, I realized, me, sister, go fast asleep. I realized, where's my mom? I started calling. I waited a while. I started calling a couple of the pastors. Nobody's answering their phone because it's two o'clock in the morning. And then the panic started to rise in me. My mom always talk about this rapture thing, eh? And I kept calling, calling. Now I'm screaming down the house. God, you can't leave me here. You can't leave me here. When I look back, I said, but I did believe in God. <laughs> because only in danger do you remember that there was a provision, that there was a way, and it's too late. When she walked in the house at 6 in the morning after her shift, I was a mess on the ground. Life was over. I could have killed myself to think that when the Holy Spirit leaves with the church, that the devil has no barrier anymore. He can do what he wants now. The reason he's not doing what he's doing that he wants to do is because Holy Spirit says no. Mercy says no. When the church is gone and Holy Spirit leaves, the enemy is free to do what he wants. There is nothing to stop him. Our loved ones will be left behind. Our friends will be left behind. That loving neighbor who has that gorgeous garden and greets you every day. The sweetest person on earth will be left behind. Church of God. God is not calling you to, to, to do any miraculous thing. He will do it. He will save them. Holy Spirit doesn't have a problem saving somebody. Holy Spirit doesn't have a problem coming upon somebody. But your life must represent the Holy Spirit. Your life must represent righteousness your life must call people into repentance when they see you they must see Jesus otherwise we're just like the world and the world is going to hell and so will be the people we love we are the influence on this world stop looking at what you need God says I've already taken care of it before you've even prayed I've already started a work I've already heard you I've already made provision I'm bringing this one from here to there I'm bringing that from here to here I'm orchestrating it so that your life will be full would you please seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness all of the things will be added unto you you don't have to worry about anything. What is it that you need? What is it that's calling you? 
What is your temptation? What is it that's keeping you from following God? What is it that's keeping you from wanting to be holy? He said, be holy as I am holy. I look at my life now. It's not the same life as last year because I'm growing and growing from glory to glory. He's changing me from glory to glory. I'm becoming stronger in the Lord. I'm becoming stronger by the power of his might. The things that I did yesterday, I don't do anymore because we're going God is bringing us. We need to be holy. We need to be an influence on this earth. The time is too short. Think about it. If the trumpet was to sound right now, how many here know that they know that you know that you will be caught up to meet him? Do you know that you know that you know that you will be called up to meet him. Is heaven your home? Is the kingdom of God? Is the kingdom of God where you belong? Are you okay? Are you still struggling with what you want and what God wants? Do you know that what we see is, is not real? That there's a spiritual world that has more, more uh, real and strategy and, and, and planning than we, than we have. We don't plan. The devil plans. He's been planning it and it's been working for many, many, many years. All of this LGBTQ stuff and this map. You heard of map, Bishop? Map is minor attracted persons because pedophiles don't want to be called a pedophile because that's a stigma. They don't like it. They want to say that five-year-olds are allowed to be in a relationship with a 60, 70-year-old because they say, I love you. I love you? You get a five-year-old to say, I love you to a 60-year-old man and he's allowed to rape her and have a relationship with her and not go to jail? The devil is a liar! But the church will not stand up. The church will not do what we're supposed to do. The church doesn't know how to reign because the church is so busy concentrating on what we want and what we need and who we are and who offends us and what we will get that we forgot that there are those lost. And if the church that is called by his name, if his people that are called by his name, what is your name? Is your name Christ? Are you Jacinta Christ? Are you Abigail Christ? All of these warnings are coming. Nobody is telling you a nice message anymore. The, the time for nice motivational lessons is done. I can't talk to you about Moses being put in a basket down the sea. Hey, there's a relevance to it, but maybe I won't use it in a reference. What I need to tell you is we are in revelation. Guys, it's trouble time. Guys, we have no more time. I'm sorry if you're offended. I'm sorry because I love you. And if I didn't love you, I wouldn't tell you that if you don't check yourself, you're going to lose yourself. If you don't check yourself, you're going to lose yourself. What a horrible thing to be in hell looking up and saying, God. And for eternity, that is where you will find your home. God is saying the same thing everywhere, right? Over and over and over and over. Why? Why? Because some of us might lose our life. Some of us are not going to make it till tomorrow. Every day, every day, people are dying. Thousands. That's why there's so many funeral homes. Beside almost every church is a funeral home, a funeral uh, a cemetery. Because they're running out of place to put it. Before I close, I'm just going, before I, I pass it over to the bishop, I just want to share a vision that I had a couple of years ago, and, and the Lord told me that he needs me to tell it, so I'm going to tell it. I don't, I don't know if it's, if, it's, if it's true, if what I saw was, but I saw it. I saw it, and it affected me so deeply, and I'm going to share it with you, believers, because if it did something for me, I pray that it will do something for you. So I was sitting down, and I went into another place. 
I was sitting and I went into another place. It was real. In this place, there were millions and millions and millions of people all around. And I'm standing there, and as far as I can see, there are people in white just like me. Going this way, there are people in white just like me. All the way back, there were people. But all the way at the front, when I stopped scanning, and I looked to the front, I saw a throne. Big, big, big throne. And as big as it was, it was as small as it was, because I was right beside it. There was not much room. But it was so big. And I could see someone sitting on it. And I could see someone standing beside it on both sides. One that was standing on the side was very militant. Like he was in the army. The other one on the other side had his elbow on the side of the throne. He was leaning on it. Very casual. With a kind of half smile on his face. And I'm standing and I'm looking. And I realized that it was God... It was Holy Spirit and it was Jesus. And in this vision, I saw Jesus who was standing like this and he's scanning the crowd and he's looking through the crowd. He's looking, he's looking. And all of a sudden he saw someone and his face lit up and he ran and everybody stepped back so he can and he came through and he hugged on it let's say it was bishop he hugged on bishop he rubbed his head he kissed him he held him he cried over him and then he led him behind the throne and they went through a big room and bishop disappeared in the back room i'm just saying it was bishop because bishop is here and you could visualize he went through and then right away he was back there and, I said, and i'm thinking where did this person go but I looked back on Jesus and he's still scanning. He's scanning, he's scanning, he's scanning. Then he sees somebody else. And again, the same thing. He runs through the crowd. People are stepping back and he grabs this person and he's looking at his face and he's crying and he says, I'm so happy to meet you. I'm so happy. Look at you. You made it. You made it. You made it. And he was so over. That everybody could feel it. And he took him. Same thing. And the person disappeared and Jesus was back here. And all of a sudden I realized that Jesus was looking for his friends. He was looking for those he had a relationship with. And all of a sudden, I wanted to be one that he found in the crowd. But I was so afraid that I would not be. I was so afraid that I was one that made it in by the skin of my teeth that I was one that had to go through the beheadings and the, the wrath of Satan on the Christians or, or those who were left behind. I, I, was, I was afraid that I, I, would, I, would, I was not counted as one he could, he could have loved on because I had been disobedient so many times, but I gave my life to Christ, so here I am. But, but I've never really been his friend. There was no excitement of me coming home. I don't want to walk into heaven as a stranger. I want to walk into heaven and see Jesus run. And as I saw him in this, in this vision and his eyes are scanning and I'm seeing he's about to look towards, he's coming closer, I disappeared out of the, the vision and that messed me up. People of God, obedience, obedience, so that you would even make it to be numbered. You would even make it to be in that crowd. I believe some of those people that were in the crowd may have been led by missionaries, accepted Christ somewhere along the way, and, and God loved them, or they were on their deathbed, or wherever God got them from, they were there. But as for you and me, consider your position, will you even make it? And if you do make it, because God is looking at your heart, right? If you keep giving in to sin every time, you keep giving in to lust and of the flesh and all of these things, are you really saved? That's the question. And if you're not saved, you need to get saved right now, right now, because you don't know. The, the Lord's return is, is, a, is, a, is a family event. 
Sorry to tell you, it's a family event. And when he comes back for his family, the family is going to take off and, and we will be like him. So anyone who is left behind, I'm sorry, but you were not part of the family. Make sure that you're part of the family. That's what I'm saying to you. You who call yourselves Christians, we who call ourselves saved and sanctified, we who call ourselves lovers of God and lovers of the gospel, make sure that you're in this family. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. That's the word of the Lord. That's the word of the Lord. That's the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you for your daughter right now. Thank you for the rhema word that she releases. We thank you for even those who are on social media that listen to this word, Lord, and they are convicted. The word is here to burn us. The word is here to convict us. The word is here to upset us. Most people, when they hear the word, they leave church upset because you speak. And today we thank you that you speak and signs and wonders will follow this word. Thank you for all our social media platform. Bless them and keep them and save them before it's too late. Wake up somebody today before the rapture. In Jesus' name.